cataractcoach.com with a case of sulcus IOL placement. The patient had the cataract surgery done with the cataract removed, and when the cortex was being moved, a large posterior capsular rent was found. Eye was filled with viscoelastic, and the lens here, a three-piece acrylic lens, has been placed inside the eye. It's primarily in the anterior chamber. More viscoelastic is placed behind the optic in order to create a barrier to avoid vitreous prolapse. And now we see the trailing haptics outside the eye. That's going to be carefully dialed inside the eye. First, let's get the leading haptic. Make sure it's appropriately placed. We're using the chopper to hold on to it. Want to make sure that leading haptic is placed exactly in the sulcus, so above the anterior capsular rim, but beneath the iris. Now that same chopper, same instruments used to dial in the trailing haptic to have the same positioning. So the haptic is going in the sulcus, in front of the anterior capsule rim, behind the iris. And it looks very well centered. In this case, we're not going to optic capture it. We'll leave the haptics in the sulcus and the optic also in the sulcus. We're putting in myocol directly drop by drop into the iris to bring the pupil down. So again, going around 360 to all parts of the iris, we want to bring the iris down. A little inadvertent placement of some air bubbles. So we'll take those out of the eye. Oh, a little bit more air bubbles. Let's get these out. Now, of course, the air bubbles are of no consequence, but it does impede our view to a small degree. So we'll get out most of those air bubbles. And now again, more of the myocol or pupillary constrictor agent being placed directly on top of the iris. We gently stroke the iris tissue as we do this, and we try to go a full 360. Now, we're going through the paracentesis to avoid depressurizing the anterior chamber. Again, drop by drop, careful that we keep the eye well in the place where we want it, which is completely in the sulcus. If the pupil comes down like it's doing now over the optic without peaking, we can be assured that there's no vitreous prolapse. That looks great. So a little bit more. Now there's some viscoelastic inside the eye. We're going to gently flush that out. You could use the irrigation aspiration port as well, but we're going to do it this way. So hydrate and seal the incisions. And now with the main incision uh, closed, through the paracentesis, we're going to wash out the viscoelastic. It does come right out that same paracentesis that we're using to inflate the eye. This is a very gentle and easy way of doing it. We can put a few syringes of fluid through the eye this way, each syringe being about 3 cc's in volume. And that will allow us to wash out the viscoelastic gently without letting the AC collapse. Now the key here is don't let the anterior chamber collapse because if the AC collapses, it could allow vitreous to prolapse forwards. And we certainly don't want that. So that looks pretty good. Most of the viscoelastic is removed. That's a little triamcinolone placed in the anterior chamber. As you know, this would stain any prolapsed vitreous. So when we swirl this around, we see, again confirmed, there is no prolapsed vitreous. So that looks great. So important to remember how to calculate the sulcus lens power. Read the article here on Cataract Coach to understand that. It does involve what I call the rule of nines. And in this particular case, we were able to achieve the exact same plane of outcome. Now, originally, we had planned on placing a toric lens for this placement. This patient has, has a little bit of an astigmatism against the rule, and that toric lens would have been helpful to neutralize that. In the USA, we do not have sulcus lenses that have torque power. So we placed a non-torque lens in the sulcus, and we're going to use the diamond blade here to create a limbal relaxing incision at that 180-degree steep meridian. So we place the blade, we're going to trace it along the limbus, and that should be sufficient for our nomogram to neutralize the patient's astigmatism. I'm happy to report that in the post op period, this patient did great. And so just goes to show you a sulcus lens can produce a beautiful visual outcome. Thank you guys for watching.